This video is on early childhood education lesson planning, and this part is going to be on choosing standards and objectives. First, let's go over the New Jersey English language arts standards. There are six standards, reading literature, reading informational text, reading foundational skills, writing, speaking and listening, and language. For the purpose of this course, you're going to choose a reading literature, reading informational text, or writing standard. This is because uh, you're creating a portfolio for NTPA and they require you to do either reading or writing. So you're going to pick one of those three standards. And then once you look at those three standards, you're going to choose one skill area and all three lessons are going to be on this same skill. So for example, you could choose story elements and then your three lessons would be the first lesson teaching setting, the next lesson teaching character, the next lesson teaching plot. Or you could pick writing informational text. And in your first lesson, they brainstorm the ideas. In the second lesson, they write the introduction. In the third lesson, they write the main body. Or you could choose main topic and details and choose three different books about clouds. In, in all three books, they will be identifying the main topic and the details, but the three different books will change. Or you could choose the standard that's comparing two texts on the same topic. And in lesson one, you could introduce the first text, then in lesson two, the second text, and then in lesson three, you would compare the two texts. So in this way, you're gonna choose one skill area and spread it over three different lessons that are consecutive. So you'll teach the three lessons in order. Now, when you're using the grade level indicators, um, make sure that you choose the one that has the grade level in the code. So you'll see here on the screen, Reading Literature 1.3. That's the third reading literature standard for first grade. That's what that code means. You'll see that there's another page that has NJSL SA codes on it. Do not use those. Those are the anchor standards that show what students need to learn by high school. <laughs> so you definitely don't want to use those. Make sure it has the one in there for first grade or it, it'll be um, P for preschool or K for kindergarten or sec two for second grade, etc. So make sure that you're using the grade level indicator and not the anchor standard. The second thing you're going to do is to choose an interdisciplinary standard uh, because we want to um, integrate the learning for young children as much as we can. So even though this is a literacy lesson, you should choose one area that you can also focus on. So it might be a book about science or a book about social studies, or maybe you're going to integrate art by having them draw the main character, or maybe you're going to integrate play by having them retell the story by acting it out, something like that. So you're going to integrate one other area into it, even though the main focus is literacy. Next, you're going to write your performance based objective. And I want you to use a three-part objective format. You've probably read about this in your textbook, but you might not have a lot of practice with it. First, you're going to identify the target behavior, then the condition under which that behavior occurs, and the criteria. So in other words, what do you want them to do? How do they do it? And how much or how well do they have to do it? Now, when you're thinking about what you want them to do, make sure that you come up with an observable behavior you may not use the term understand or the term learn because we can't directly observe those. So you don't want to say the students will learn how to identify the main details because we can't see learning. So you would uh, use a verb that you can actually see. Let me give you some examples. The students will identify the main idea and key details by reading chapter three and writing information in the writer's notebook. That's how it happens and they have to have the correct main idea and three key details that appropriately relate to the main idea. So your objective will look something like this. Students will be able to identify the correct main idea and three appropriate key details from chapter three and write them in their writer's notebook. Here's another one. The students will be able to write labels for a drawing. And how will they do that? Using a word map and invented spelling. And how well do they have to do this? we want to see at least the initial consonants are identifiable. Or this one, students will be able to create an introduction using a graphic organizer and including three complete sentences. So again, it's the what do you want them to do, how do they do it, and how well do they have to do it. Here's another one. 
Students will be able to identify the main character by drawing a picture. That's how they're going to do it. And the uh, criteria for success is the details have to show what the character looks like. So when you write these three part objectives, they automatically become your formal assessment. So the performance assessment is usually the independent practice part of your lesson. So writing these three part objectives is wonderful because it automatically does your assessment for you. 